back to Build Your Empire. Today, we are speaking to the amazing Sharon Agnos. We haven't caught up for quite some time. So uh, I'm excited to not only be looking at her as you guys are listening to this, or maybe you're watching this on YouTube as well, um, but to be covering an epic, epic um, background story of this amazing lady. So welcome, Sharon. Thanks for joining us. Hey, gorgeous, incredible soul. Thank you so much. I love being here with you. Awesome. We're going to get uh, a little bit vulnerable, a little bit raw today and really just take people on that journey. Again, most of you know that this podcast is built around showing you that not everyone had, you know, amazing choices early on in their life or not everyone had the tools that they needed, but they had to find a way to go and get those tools. So Sharon, tell me a little bit about you growing up. What did life look like? Um, growing up for me, life was like, I was like a tomboy. I was the youngest of four kids. I had three older brothers. My dad was a karate instructor. Um, you know, it, it every night, it, oh, it felt like every night at our place, we always had people there. They would, everyone would train with my dad and then they would come back home and mum would feed like just all these people. There'd be alcohol everywhere. There, you know what I mean? It was, it was yeah. just that era. Do you know what I mean? You trained hard, you drank hard. That, that, that's kind of like what I kind of grew up around. Yeah. More um, train hard, drink hard, party hard, do everything hard, which is kind of the, has always been a philosophy for me that everything you do, you go, go 100%. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, sometimes it kind of sent you a bit pear-shaped and <laughs> you would take one different paths, which we'll probably cross into a bit later. But um, I kind of look back. So for those that don't know me, um, I'm 50. And I look back at my life and think I was always a winner. I was always a champion. Yeah. Right. And I've, there's been certain areas of my life where I've said things consistently to myself, which has told me that, yes, I am. Right. Yeah. And then there's other times in my life where I, where I haven't had the same self-talk and that same self-focus and that same, and they've gone on to a comparison game. And that has always played a big part in like watching you die straight down. Yeah. Right. And you hear it in, nearly every business that comparison is the thief of all joy um but it's something that we just we, i think it's habitually not habitually when i say habitually i think it's it's kind of been put into us if, if we look at um lots of the kids i look at kids movies and stuff now and i look at them you know for example if anybody's got kids out there and they've seen the show zootopia and the little bunny wants to become this incredible copper however the big rhino dude who's the big boss says you will never be what you want you can never have it easy in life like, just those things you don't realize until you stop and look at things you don't realize all that little subliminal messaging that's going through to our subconscious mind that when we think we can't do something it's kind of our subconscious mind compares straight back to everything we've seen Mm. Uh, and we realise that there's just like everybody that wants to get somewhere in the movies is always falling over. Something great will happen at the end, but there's so mm. much pain in between. So I think we kind of get like um, set for that in life. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah, and I think a lot of people, and it's really important that you brought that up because I think a lot of people will try and skip. They, you know, one, two, miss a few, skip the pain yeah. and want the outcome. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. No. So, no. you know, like you said, for people that don't know who Sharon Agnos is, tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened for you that really blew your life up, your career up, and really put you, I guess, on the forefront of people's mind there for probably many years. Who, who was Sharon Agnos? So I think one of the big things I really want to share was at the age of 13, I was being defiant with my father about doing some school homework. I think it was maths. And I used to say, I hate maths. I, I love, I love numbers now. Like I'm just, I learn numbers till I know them inside out. Cause I know business doesn't work without KPIs and numbers and being able to test and measure everything. Right. Mm. But I was saying to my dad, like, I don't even feel like I need to do this. Why do I have to do this? And I was arguing with him and, he just said to me, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'm just like, I just want to be a world champion. I want to be the best in the world. He said, what at? And I said, I have no idea, but I think my fist will get us there. Now, I'd been doing karate from about the age of four and a half. Yeah. I remember seeing photos where I've got like a dress skirt on and a beautiful blouse and I'm in the back trying to throw kicks and everything. I'm not even supposed to be in the class. And I was kind of already defined of like, no, you're not going to keep me out of here. But I just, I just knew that I wanted to be the best in the world, right? And wow. I think when I went through high school, you know, I shifted high schools, went from one town to another. We moved a lot um, growing up. 
dad kind of chased the work and just, you know, he had karate schools opened all over the place. Uh, I was always getting picked on and bullied um, because you were like the karate girl, right? So they were, everyone wanted to kind of give you a bit everyone of a test. Everyone wanted a piece. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just, I remember in, in year 10, I remember I'm standing in the headmaster's office because I'd got in trouble again. Right. So when people go, oh, ADHD and all these sort of things, it's all new. I'm not sure if it's new or if we just, there's so many of us that don't like staying still that we like to be active and moving and we like to be doing more than just kind of being spoken at. I think as you become an adult, when you sit in a personal development course and someone's talking to you and it's boring as batshit, right? It's hard to try and retain or write or be a part of anything. School's pretty much the same. But I remember standing there and she said to me, you got two choices. This stupid dream you have of being a world champion is never going to come to, to reality. So you can either give up your training because uh, I would go training every single night after school. You can give up your training and I will put you into year 11 or you can continue on the path that you're on and you'll stay in year 10 for as long as you decide to stay in the school. And I was like, oh, can I come back to you on Monday about that? <laughs> Thinking, you bitch, right? Because people don't see, so this is when somebody else doesn't see your dream, don't let it stop your dream. Right now, I was 16, I was very impressionable, standing inside a headmaster's office, I've just been caught smoking or doing something ridiculous, right? Standing in front of a headmaster's office, right? And back back then, back in those days, it was normal. Like you would train and smoke and do all sorts of crazy things. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, there's it was a whole different thing of what's normal to what's not normal. But um, I remember just thinking, I'm actually shitting myself. Like I'm really scared. And when she said all that, I'm like, I've got to go and kind of reassess all this. And I can tell you what happened. By Monday, I was in a brand new school. Right. I didn't go back to that school. I just went to another school and I swapped into doing something which is going to lead me into a different direction where it wasn't all about, you know, um, physics and bi biology and all that. It was more about, um, you know, apprenticeship style stuff because I thought I just want to learn how to do one thing while I'm learning how to be a world champion. Mm -hmm. So there's always a way. They always say um, obstacles are going to get in your way and the mm -hmm. obstacle always is the way. And it's about how resourceful you are. And people think resourceful means if I'm going to be resourceful, it means I need money to be resourceful. No, you just need to think outside a box and think if there was a way, what would it be? Because we don't ever ask ourselves enough questions. We just go, I can't do that because I don't have this versus if I could do that, what's a way I could make that happen? Mm. So for me, I went home to my parents and kind of said, hey, this is where we're at. And they're like, well, you're going to have to make a choice. I said, or we could just change schools. We could go somewhere else. And then I'll... I'll do whatever I need to do, but we'll, we'll go somewhere else. So we, we did. And it, like for me, when I, you know, when I'm out in meetings with business coaches and stuff and, you know, being you know coached by personal development coaches, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things for me is my um, ability to handle living uh, like lots of variety, like lots of sudden change. I can handle it quickly. Um, sudden change, for example, right now I'm, I'm standing in a beach cottage. As of uh, Sunday, I had to be out of the house we were in. I think it was about six o'clock Saturday night. I still didn't have anywhere to go um, because, because rentals are just crazy at the moment. Mm. You know, there's 40, 50, 60 people applying for one house. Um, mm. There's people that are paying a lot of money up front. And I was just like, all I need to do is just get a roof. I'll work it out from there. Do you know what I mean? I think the, the, good, the best part of that is, is I, I don't get too overstressed. Just, this has got to get done. I go to here. Yeah. And my kids will learn how to be resilient and how to just go with the flow and go with change. And, you know, so many people get stuck in a way where life is meant to look this way and this is the picture. And if the picture isn't matched, then I'm a failure. And I just think, blow the fucking picture up and get a new one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like so another thing that really blows me away is all of my life, you, you know, we talk about building an empire. All of my life I'm like, I just want to be successful. I just want to build this empire. I just want to be this person. Mm. And then finally about three years ago, four years ago, I was like, I don't need a bank load of money to show me that I'm successful. You already are. You already I are. I am successful. Yeah. So... You know, when I, when I just look and think, if I already know that I am I, and everything's already inside me, you know, obviously, yes, we get people to help us stay accountable and we're getting things done and somebody who's probably ran a business before helped you along the way. But it's like when you're passionate about whatever it is that you do now, if you're passionate about weaving straw baskets, go and weave straw baskets. Don't go and work in a, like, don't go and work somewhere else. Just do what you're passionate about, whatever that is. Like, everything is sellable these days. 
Now, when I go back to what happened with my headmaster, if I'd listened to that teacher and probably a few more others, uh, I wouldn't have become a five-time world champion. I wouldn't, make, I wouldn't have become Australia's very first female world champion boxer. I wouldn't have, you know, been inducted into the Hall of Fame in Queensland. I wouldn't have been inducted into the Hall of Fame over the Women's Hall of Fame over in America. Um, like, I wouldn't have, I've broken the history, or not broken, I've written my name in history. Like, I was the very first woman to ever win the WBC, which is like the big green belt, Muhammad Ali, Kosa Zoo. Lennox Lewis, I wouldn't have been the first female featherweight world champion of the WBC in all of forever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So if I listened to them and didn't go, no, I want to do what makes me happy, this is what makes me happy, right? So my, my message is do what makes you happy as long as it's not harming someone else. Yeah. Now me punching people in the face <laughs> under protected um, arenas wasn't hurting someone else, right? It's just for us it's like a chess game. But you've got to do what fills you up. And you kind of find, and Mel, you would know it. Um, we've been in different, a couple of different arenas together. You do things and they feel good for a while and then they just get really hard and it's like you push and you push and you push and you push and you think, oh, was this actually meant to be the money-making idea? Was it the spiritual growth? Was it the energetic growth? Was it like, and everything you start is a growth phase. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you outgrow. We think that everything is forever as well. Yes. And and it's not. And, you know, like you said, we've been in a couple of arenas together. And for me, it was, you know, realising that a certain arena had served its purpose. And the growth from that arena was phenomenal. But it was yeah. time to move because yes. my my purpose and my my passions had that needle had shifted. You know, um, I heard something the other day where they said, if you move the needle three degrees from flying to LA, you'll land in Washington, DC. Yep. Right? Absolutely. And, and it's so incredibly true that, and you know, when you speak about this, like all you've done is move that needle at the time where it didn't quite feel aligned anymore. And I think yep. too many of us get the guilt that we should stay put. You know, we need to stay in that job or we need to stay doing whatever it is that we're doing because what is everyone going to think? But it's more like, you know, the universe is giving you that little nudge, like you're not aligned right now. It's time to find the next thing that you're going to excel in. Yeah, absolutely. I, so, I love that you said that. So moving forward, you know, um, I guess if I was to say to you, what would you say um, to somebody who's, who's really wanting to pursue those passions or, or, you know, they've found a way that they can monetize the thing that they love. What's, what's a couple of bits of, uh, of information that you could give them that were game changers for you? It might be a book. It might be a quote. It might be a, a system that you put into action. What does that look like? Yep. Uh, okay. So the first thing I, I, I spent a lot of time just, when someone would tell me to do something, I'd do it. It was the same in the ring. Sharon, turn your foot. Sharon, throw the left. Double, double up your jab, whatever it was. When it came into business, I would do the same. Just tell me the next thing. Tell me the next thing. Tell me the next thing. And it's like, you've always got to feed off someone else. And now I'm at the point where it's like, what if I just go with the flow and ask myself? So there's a couple of things I always say to people before. If you want to grow in anything, detox your body. Yep. However you want to do that, um, Go and find a way that is a clean way of detoxing, whether it costs money or it doesn't cost money. I see another, somebody put something up today about um, people not wanting, they want to start a business, that they don't want to invest in, in a business, they've got no money. You've got to put something up front so it's worth your while no matter what. But one, go and detox your body. When you, there's a really um, strong resemblance, and I know you've done a lot of work on depression and stuff as well, Mel, between gut health and brain health, yeah. right? And, the, and, and your mental health also stems from the gut, yeah. right? So, and now I'm not a doctor, I am studying to be one, but I'm not going to give you medical advice. I'm just going to say, go and find a detox, a good detox. If you want to ask me, I can recommend a couple, yeah. but go and find a good detox and detox your system. The next thing you need to do is detox your mind mm. from all the bullshit that you've been taught or you think is, is being real and detach from it, right? Because anything and everything is possible. I listen to people say, these YouTubers that are making $20 million and I'm like, well, good on them. Yeah, but they just sit in front of there. Who cares how they do it? Yeah. They're entertaining other people. They're having a great time. If they stepped outside their comfort zone, they're doing something different. And because it's not the niche of what, you know, I grew up in or my parents grew up in or my, or my grandparents, it's all of a sudden it can't be done because we were so brainwashed on how money was meant to be made. Yeah. Right. And so I look hard. at it, if, 
And it was hard. Is- and it, it, you know, money was hard to make. It's, it just doesn't grow on trees, you know? Yes. That, that, I mean, I don't know. What were some of the ones that you heard? I'm not a fucking ATM was, was my <laughs> one. <laughs> I'm not an ATM. Um, you know, I don't know where you think this money comes from was another one. What were some that you heard? Yeah, yeah a, a lot of those. Money doesn't yeah. grow on trees. And I'm like, look, at, now I'm going, bullshit. It's paper. It does. It is a tree. <laughs> Money's a tree. Do you know? So it's, it's really funny. And, you know, lots of no's and can'ts and don'ts and, even as a parent right now, my life has been, man, I've lived for 50 years, incredibly. I've had, like I said to my kids, I remember we were down the beach and we were holding hands and, you know, the waves were coming in. This is, you know, back in 2013. Mm-hmm. And they were getting scared. I'm like, don't worry, I'll, I'll never leave a soldier behind. Let's all hold hands together. We're all in this together. So when I got the opportunity to go to America and train with Roy Jones Jr. for three months, um, after I had my four kids, my mum and dad are like, whatever this stupid idea is in your head, what if you leave the kids and Anthony here, which Anthony was our nanny, is now because he's like my best friend, mm-hmm. right? You leave, you leave them here, we'll look after them. You go off and do your thing and then come back. I'm like, this is about me doing a thing. This is about me making an impact. Yeah. And I thought because I was um, a world champion athlete and a fighter, that's what I had to become again in parenthood. So I was scared of letting go. Not staying still. Would I lose that identity? Do I now become nobody? You know, get all the way to the top of primary school and you're someone in the school and now you're back at the bottom of the next school and you're like, no one. And I just said to mum, like, never. uh, This is what it's about. I'll never leave a soldier behind. And I remember we were in the US and, man, we had no money. We had nothing. I didn't know whether there was money that was going to go in the bank, whether there wasn't. Everything kind of fell apart when we got there from, you know, Roy Jones wasn't who I went to train with. I was promised, a, you know, some fights over there. I was promised sponsorship. I was promised to be looked after by a guy I'd been speaking to for over a year. I got there within two days, realised it was all bullshit no. and went, that's great. I've got four little boys. I think the twins might have been four, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, four years old. And then Willie and Tyler are under them, right? Mm. And then I just... You know, I remember I made porridge and I stuck it because it was all I had. All I had was porridge in the fridge and I had a bit of chicken. And I made them all porridge and came back from the gym and I put it down. And my kids are always like, you know, kids just want what they want. Mm. And they're like, they've been playing a game. And they come and sit down to eat and they said, mummy, it's cold. And I said, well, that's okay. You just have to eat it. They're like, we don't like it cold. I want hot porridge. And that was my probably one of my breakdown moments. And I sat down with them and I just started crying. I said, you need to understand something. There's Mm -hmm. days where we're going to have a lot of money and there's days where we're probably going to have no money and there's days where I'm not going to know where money's coming from. There's days where it's going to flow quite freely. But in all of that, we need to make the most of what we've got. Mm -hmm. Now, I I I had an option of leaving you at home with your grandparents and me just coming here and doing this, which would have cost me nearly no money. Mm -hmm. Right, But getting everybody here cost me over $24,000, which Mm -hmm. I had to try and raise, right? Mm -hmm. And I just said to them, I have no money. I actually don't know if there's going to be money in the bank yeah. But I believe there's going to be money in the bank, so everything's going to be fine. But what you need to understand is that I have no more porridge. I have no more milk. I have no more fruit. Mm. Today, that is your food. Now we've got a choice. We're in this together and we never leave a soldier behind, so we've just got to suck it up. And they sat down. I had They were crying with me and we're all eating this cold porridge. Mm. And my kids have probably, I don't know, I, just, I feel like that was a big lesson for all of us, mm. that we don't expect anything anymore. What we do get, we appreciate um, and it makes a big difference. 5,000 US dollars got put in my bank by a sponsor later that, that day. So we actually got to go and have a real meal. Yeah, <laughs> wow. I mean, but there's, you know, when I got to America and realised everything was falling apart and what was happening isn't happening anymore, mm. most people would have got on a plane and come home. And I was like, I'm here. We're going to make the most of it. And that's why I ended up getting in touch with Roy Jones Jr. And I haven't looked back. We're, you know, we're, we're great friends. We're in business together today, not to do with boxing. We're in business together yeah. today. You know, uh, it's just... You never know where life leads you until you step off that safety net mm. and go, what else is possible? Yeah, and I think in that moment, you know, the lesson also, like life was happening for you, not to you, you know, and I think too many people look at the situation and go, it's not exactly what I need it to be. It doesn't fit into the box, you know, it doesn't look perfect and, yeah. and we actually miss exactly what it is that was going to be delivered because like you said we leave we don't show up we don't stay the whole day you know whatever happens and we actually miss the lesson um but you know even like you said with the money flowing in like you don't get more until you're grateful for what you got and in that moment you were completely grateful and then bang you know more money in your bank 
absolutely. So a lot of the times it's easy for us as well. So the other thing when I talk about deep, like um, when I say cleanse your gut and then cleanse mm. your mind. So it's all about if, you have, if you're not already doing something around meditation, if you're not already doing something with being still, if you're not already doing something where you're just shutting everything down and just going inside because you are, whoever is watching this, I'm talking to every one of you individually I, and I don't have to know you to know that I love you, mm. right? I love you. Everyone that is watching this, please know singly, I love every single one of you and every one of you have exactly what you need inside of you, mm. right? You don't need to keep going searching for it. The answers are here, but life is so busy and our brain is so busy that we don't slow down enough to go and ask ourselves the questions and ask the right questions to get the answers. Now, if you're not already meditating, like I couldn't recommend it. Uh, I, I, I could recommend it. I will. I, I don't mean I couldn't recommend it. That's kind of a, anyway, 100%. Go and listen to someone. Go and listen to someone like simply, he's easy to find Dr. Joe Dispenza. Just go and have a listen to him. Listen to how, and he's got, he's got free meditations, but start listening to what's going on. You know, I truly, truly believe we are 00.01% flesh and blood and we're 99.99% energy. Right, that's why if you walk into a room and every you're you're feeling yuck, you walk into a room and everybody's having a great time, all of a sudden you feel like you're great. Mm. If you walk in, you're feeling great and everybody's down, all of a sudden you get pulled down with them. We are energy. And if whatever energy you're putting out, you know, if I'm building or I'm chasing or I want to be successful, all of that want to want to want to, it's like we're in that chase motion. So the universe just gives us lots more stuff around that energy, right? We feel like we're already successful in that space, that energetic connection, right? And you can really, when I say feel it, like another one, you know, I, I had to go and speak in Italy, right? It was going to cost me bucket loads to get there, right? To, and, and I was like, all oh, my kids wanted to come. And I'm like, I was sick of, like, sick of not being, you know, having to be away from my kids. You know, every time we went to a conference, it was me on my own. Um, you know, and we all like to party as well. So that would probably get me in even more trouble while we're away. <laughs> but anyway, well, it was uh, like Italy. I just went through this phase. I'm like, I, I'm going to test a measure, right? I'm just going to test a measure. So I'm going to believe that I'm going. I'm going to have a look at exactly where I'm staying. I'm going to see this plane in there. I'm going to see this on the plane. I'm going to see all of this stuff, right? So I've seen everything the way it was meant to be. So, um, and it was five o'clock the night before the flights left, mm -hmm. right? And the same happened when I went to America. It was around the same time. Now, this time I might be about three o'clock because my girlfriend was helping me. She just rang me up and said, like, what's going on and how are you going to get there? I'm like, I've got no idea. And she's like, you know, she just said to me, well, I've got 19,000 sitting in a travel fund. Would you like to use some of that? And I'm like, I beg your pardon. And she's like, just use that. Just use that. It's all good. So it's a lot of the times when someone wants to offer us stuff, we're so busy going, no, 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 no. We want to manifest things. We want to manifest money. We want to manifest more things. And so when someone offers us stuff, no, 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 I can do it on my own. It's like, wake up. The universe is trying to give it to you, mm. right? If you want to work out a way to gift it back or whatever you need to do, do that. But when the universe is putting something in front of you, instead of going, I can do this myself, just go, thank you, universe. Ladies, I'm going to let you know, if you, if you are manifesting a lot of money and you end up with a really amazing partner who is rich, don't be like, oh, no, I don't. You're manifesting money. You're manifesting a partner and you're manifesting money. doesn't mean you need to spend all the money. It doesn't matter. That, that's totally up to you. But don't think, oh, I have to go and do this all on my own. If somebody is there wanting to invest and put time in with you, right, say yes, thank you. And I guess this is more predominantly women than men. I don't know. Men, the same thing. If you, it, It's just when you're manifesting in that stage of manifestation and bringing things on, take what's coming. And when you see a little bit, be really grateful for that little bit. You know what? The, the simple thing that we say when money comes through is um, arigato, which is something that I learned through a guy called Ken Holden, and it was just being thankful. Like I even look at, um, I don't care what sort of politics you're into, that doesn't really, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But Donald Trump was a very, very, very wealthy man. Well, he mm -hmm. still is. Now, I read a story that he used to bless, he owns lots and lots of real estate. He used to bless every building, every car, everything that got built, he would bless, be blessing it. My God, bless the owner of that. That's just amazing. Instead of like, oh, look at that. You, oh, they've got, I bet they've got lots of money. The way you look at things and the way you bless and feel as if it's just beautiful and it's, it's in alignment with you is what allows the universe to hit you that, with that frequency and start bringing you more things that will bless you. Yeah, it's so true. And I think um, there was one thing that popped up. I'm trying to remember what it was about. So talking about the blessing, I know that even when I pay a bill, like I write on it, thank you. You know, because I, I'm grateful that I'm in a position where I can have a house, a home, a car, a whatever, you know. So I think, like you said, it's flipping it 
flipping it on its head, you know, it doesn't always yeah. have to be bad, you know, and like the other thing, you know, when money's coming to you, you don't get to choose how. The how, yes. you don't get to choose the how, you know, you've just got to obviously manifest in that money and, uh, and how it shows up is not up to you. One thing that, and I'll share this because we're on the topic is I remember somebody saying to me about manifestation, that the one way that you can find more money in your life is to go and have a look at things like say your shopping receipt and you'll see on there a uh, saving, you know, of $13.49. So what I actually started to do was move that money. So I'd move the $13.49 because I would have spent it anyway, right? Then I'd go out for lunch with a girlfriend and she'd pay. So I'd move the $45 that I was going to spend on lunch. And oh my God, at that moment, my life completely changed because I was, I want to manifest in, I need more, 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 right? It was already there, but it was coming in in ways that I didn't necessarily see it. So yeah. how crazy that I didn't get more, well, what I thought was more, but, you know, it was already there. Have you had something uh, like that happen before, you know, where you've, yeah. you know, you've been able to? That's really, so that's really powerful, Mel, because you've actually got to move the money and put it somewhere, mm. right? So I'm going to just show you something if it works out. Um, so what I did, I was, there's a really cool app mm. and it's called um, The Secret to Money. So it just kind okay. of... Uh, but, I've got a little picture here, right? Now, don't, can you see that? Yeah. Down the bottom, I just put everything. So if somebody gave me money for something that I wasn't expecting or I bought on a new client or um, I went and stayed at somebody's, like if I've travelled somewhere with, with the company that I'm with and someone's like, no, don't go, come and stay with me. I'm like, well, what would it have cost me to go and have all those meals and go and stay somewhere if I was there and put that in? Um, you know, if someone's gone, and, again, same thing, shopping or, you know, if someone's coming, if money's come through, you know, I've got discounts on stuff that I've bought for the kids. I ended up in three months. Now, can you see the figure down the bottom? $75,000. Wow. wow. And he, he, this was in three months. So what so was I that called again? It's called, I'll just, I'll bring it back up. So it's called, um, can you see that? The one on the corner, this one right here. Mm. Yeah, right Money. there. What's it called? Money. <clears throat> So it's secret, the secret of money. The secret, secret of money. Secret to money. The secret to money. Secret so the top of it, the secret to money. Awesome. So it's, got all, it's got all your purchases in, in there as well. You get money every day to spend. So we're not used to spending money. We're always trying to save it. Then money's not going to flow. Yeah. It's got your manifested money. It's got daily inspirations. It's got affirmations. It's got desires. Wow. So what you want, like all of the six, uh, the seven things on here, what you want. You know, for me, even donating one million to charity a year is, not, is on my list. So every time I get money coming in, it's like, right, where can I send some money to help somebody else? Yeah. Um, it's got everything on here. And it's, I think it costs maybe seven bucks or eight bucks or something to set up. Wow. Um, but it's a beautiful way. And now that was three months. Now here's me saying, I just want to earn $100,000 a year. I want to earn $100,000 mm. a year. In three months, I manifested $75,000 in things. Mm. Like I sold a business. I'd done so many things. It just wasn't physical money that was coming into my hand all the time. Right. We always think it's got to be what sits in our bank. Right. Um, so when you start to kind of, I can, I can also tell you when you start to go a bit deeper into yourself and start to realize that you're an energetic field, mm. you start to kind of step back from a lot of people because you'll feel like a resistance. Yeah. Right. And I, I, I work with energy with lots of people. Mm. even in the gym. So I, I now run a boxing gym with my brother as well as a couple of other businesses. But uh, even in the gym, like if I've got women or men in there and they're like, oh, I don't know what to do about this. I'm like, all right, let's go into this space. I'll take them into a beautiful energy space of just gratitude and love. And I'll ask them a question. You watch their body will fall forwards or their body will fall backwards. Right. I'll ask a question, which I originally know would be a yes. And then I'll ask a question that I originally know would be, a, well, I definitely know would be a no. And I, I watch their body move the way it's meant to. Or that it would in your energy field. Yes, I'm going to pull towards that. Or no, oh my God, I'm going to get away. Um, and then I start asking questions around what it is. Wow. We wow. can always do it now. If you want to stand up, I can show you how. Oh, my gosh. All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, what have I got to do? Lucky I've got yeah. pants on. Yeah. <laughs> Just put till your screen, babe, because I haven't got any I've pants got on. Pants on. <laughs> well, you won't be able to see me. I don't think you'll be able to see fully, but... All right, what have I got to so do? I just want you to be side on, okay. right? You're just going to be like side on and I just want you to put your hands on your heart. And where are you right now? Just let me ask you that question. You tell me where are you right now? Where's home for you? As in the area? Or, yeah. Uh, so I'm Brisbane North. Okay. 
So I just want you to go into a complete space of unconditional love. Just feel into your heart, close your eyes. This is a thing that you need to get out of your head for going to complete love. It could be when you first gave birth, when you fell in love with someone, when your little one touches you on the cheek, when they giggle, when they hug you and say, I love you, mummy, when they're crying, like, I just need you to be with me. Just go to that space of complete love. Are you there? Mm Mm-hmm. And I just want you to ask yourself, and you'll just let your body freely move whichever way. And I can see which way it's going to move anyway because you're side on. But I want you to ask yourself, am I standing in my home in Brisbane North right now? Am I standing in my home in Brisbane North right now? Yeah, and just feel that question go in and just see where your body goes. Oh, it went forward. Yep. yep. So now I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask a question, another question. So don't repeat it, just hear it, feel it in your heart and then let your body move, right? So the question is, should I go and kick a live puppy really hard right now? Just feel it and see where your body goes. Oh, it definitely goes backwards. Wow. Okay, can you feel that? Yeah. So then if you, if you were to say to me, ask me some questions about your podcast, ask me some questions about your, you know, your business, then I would ask you those questions and your body will give you the answers. And you've got to keep the questions. It's a yes or a no. Like, am I going to be successful? Uh, yes or so no. So is this a right? lot like kinesiology, I guess? Is it? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, Probably. Well, I'm actually off for a, for a session after this too. Which oh, I love it. I love it. Very, very much about the energy that the body puts out. So look, We've covered some epic ground today. We've gone from, you know, winning world titles to, you know, what it looks like, what life looks like now. Look, if there was one piece of advice, just one that you could give to someone moving forward that, you know, like you said, might be at a crossroad in their life, what would it be? Is it a book? You know, is it, um, you know, is there something, like you said, obviously it's meditating, detoxing, those types of things. Is it just to go inside yourself? Well, I would say one book that, like, there's lots of books that can change your life. And while we're talking about The Secret, right, and it doesn't matter what people think about the movie or they don't think, or this is bullshit, mm-hmm. it's not bullshit, <clears throat> it doesn't matter. <clears throat> when you come into a space of complete gratitude and love, mm-hmm. um, life changes. So I say two things. I say love is the bridge between you and everything you want. If it's a better relationship, if, if it's so you, your kids love you more, so you have a better time at work, start loving everything and everyone that's around you. Just love them unconditionally. Mm-hmm. Not like, oh, my God, I don't like him because of the way he breathes or he's too this or she's too that. or like I, I, I'm in such a non-judgmental space, mm-hmm. like non-judgmental, like, and I just hug everyone right? So one, love is the bridge to everything. If you're in a different state, you're up against resistance, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, is there something you should do? If it feels light for you when somebody says that, or if you you move you, should I go out to dinner with this guy? Move forward. Yeah. No. Women, we got this intuition where it's normally in our guts and the quicker you pick up on that moving, your gut will just pull or push, right? I do the same when I want to, if I'm I'm going to bring a house, somebody to clean my house, I'll do the same thing before they even knock on the door or do an interview when I'm talking to them on the phone or, you know, now it's at the point where I just look at them and I'll just feel that energy. No, they'll stay away. Not the right people. Um, But I would go and get them. Isn't it? It's trusting the messages that your body's already giving you. Yeah, because it's energies because you just moved, Mm. right? No. No one would want to go and hurt a live puppy. I was going to say something about you, beautiful big blue um, macaw, right? <laughs> she <laughs> you kicked might be like, my ass. <laughs> huh? She'd kick my ass. Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, um, so it's just in that space, just believe in yourself. Yeah. Right? Do, it's not about um, am I going to get recognition from someone else from what I've done. I stand in front of a mirror and say, have I done enough? for me not for somebody else not for someone who wants you to be successful not for not for anyone just have i done enough for me yeah. right and then the, so the, the the magic book i watched this book for oh my gosh I know, months and months and months and i finally started it and my whole world changed because mm. i started going to gratitude for everything even the stuff that it broke my heart when i was a kid mm. now um, another thing i want to remind you of Lots of people will say, but I can't because I've gone through this or I've done that or I've been beaten or raped or dumped or parents are divorced, whatever it may be. Everything is a blessing. Yeah. Everything is a blessing. I look at my parents and think, thank you for everything that ever happened. Every, mm-hmm. if I copped a beating from my dad, if I, you know, got shoved in a room, you know, they weren't monsters, but everything is a blessing. 
yeah. every single thing. So many people are like um, resentful to their parents and resentful to other people because of how they've made them feel. It's, it, it's your feeling. Mm. You get to choose what you do with it. Yeah. Right. And my parents, oh my gosh, my parents, I can ring them at 11 o'clock at night and say, I need help. My parents are there in like 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They've, I'm, I'm very blessed. But so the, the magic book by Rhonda Byrne is really powerful. The secret to money app is, is unbelievable just mm. to keep track of what's going on. You know, this house was meant to be $185 a night. Mm. And I'm like, whoo, that's a lot of money. That's interesting from where I am right now. And I just, I emailed them and messaged them and just asked, could I get it for $120 a night? Because that would fit my budget better. And they're like, absolutely. Right. So look at how much I just saved for a couple of weeks, how much money I just had gifted back to me by the universe. I reckon if I asked for a hundred, I probably would have got it. And if you don't ask, you don't know. Right. And yeah. too, too many times people's ego is in the way. Like, oh, I'm not going to ask. Um, you know, and it doesn't make you look as though you don't have the finances or, you know, you're too poor. I think it's everything's so inflated that like, really, I think looking at what it's worth is, is definitely better. So I've, I, I've got quite a few friends that are millionaires or multimillionaires, right? Now, one of the things that I've noticed about them is they don't go and buy lunch all the time. They don't go and just buy coffee. So those of us that haven't quite made it to a certain level, we're always buying the coffee and we're shouting for somewhere else. We're doing some of this, we're doing some of that. Whereas they kind of quite, they understand where their numbers are. Do you know what I mean? So they, they just stop me and I, and I'm at a point now where I ask my body, do I really want that? No, I'm not about whether it fits my bank. Does, do I really want that? Do I really want to eat that food? Or do I really want to have that drink? Do I, does, so I ask my body, does it want it? Because most of the time we just go, ah, bugger it, let's just go and have it. Ask your body and see what happens. Because your body will give you a direct answer. Just say, do I want this? Your body will just push it away or it'll move forward. It'll go yes or no. Wow, that's so interesting. I love this. Sharon, thank you so much. Um, I know you're busy. You're mid-moving house and, and literally changing your life um, as we speak. So thank you so much. I'm sure everyone will take a lot away from this. Um, I respect you. I miss you. Um, oh, I love you and thank you so much. I want you to know that I just look at you, Mel, and just I just think keep shining bright, girl, because you're the only one that can tell yourself how amazing you you are and you're the one that's got to believe it and I just have watched you grow from strength to strength to strength and I know both of us have known each other personally for a long time yeah. and it's like we hit rock bottom and then we're like oh and the rock bottom can be from anywhere it can be from a relationship yeah. it can be from a failed business it can be from maybe I'm drinking too much it can be from I'm just having an emotional meltdown I do all we all do we all do. I think, I think probably the most important thing is vulnerability is a new black. Just be vulnerable. Just speak the truth. Stop. Oh, my God. You go to America and you, someone, some guy will start talking to you. He wants to give you his, what he earns, where he's working, everything. Yeah. It's just like, but who are you? Yeah. Right now this is all the things you can bring, but who are you? Yeah. Just be you and just fall in love with yourself. Perfect. I love and you've that. done it so incredibly, so incredibly. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. All right. Well, that wraps it up with the call with the amazing Sharon and Yoss. And uh, make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to hear more.